There is no doubt that sex makes the world go round, even though it can be immoral or illegal just as it can also be a bonding or loving experience, a formality, fun, and exciting. There are some societies out there with cultures that make us look like painfully repressed prudes when it comes to sexual activities. Some of these cultures no longer exist, but there will always be people to take their place. With so many tribes and small groups out there, it is impossible to list all of the strange sexual customs and adulthood rites that each group might practice. Many societies likely keep their ways of life close to the proverbial chest, away from the judgmental eyes of outsiders. As we embark on this exploration of African sexual practices, it is crucial to approach the topic with cultural sensitivity and respect. Let us strive to shed preconceived notions or judgments, and instead embrace the opportunity to learn about diverse sexual traditions. By fostering a spirit of understanding and acceptance, we can contribute to a world where cultural diversity is celebrated and human sexuality is acknowledged in all its forms. Number 10, The Sambians, the Semen Drinking Tribe, Papua, New Guinea. To become a man in this primitive tribe, boys are removed from the presence of all females at seven, living with other males for 10 years. During the 10 years, the skin is pierced to remove any contamination women bring. For the same reason, they also regularly incur nose bleeding and vomiting caused by consuming large amounts of sugarcane. They drink the semen of their elders to retain growth, strength, and sexual potency, and when they are reintroduced to society, they continue their nose bleeding habit to mirror their wives' menstrual cycle. Number 9, The Martijara, Intimate Cutting Rituals to Achieve Manhood, Australia. The Martijara Aborigines of Australia have one of the most shocking boyhood to manhood transformations out there. For the first portion of this Martijara Aboriginal rite, a boy at the age of 10 or 12 has his front tooth knocked out and his septum pierced. He is considered symbolically dead at this point and then he is taken into the wilderness by other men, circumcised, and then expected to ingest his foreskin without chewing. He is mute throughout the entire process. After he heals up, the penis is then cut lengthwise on the underside, sometimes to the scrotum. Blood is then dripped over a fire to purify it. From then on, the male will urinate from the underside of his penis instead of the urethra. Then all of the men go hunting and return to camp with food and covered in blood, and the boy is considered reborn as an adult male. Number 8, The Trobrianders, the tribe where kids start having sex at 6, Papua, New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is one of the most culturally diverse countries on the planet with 848 different languages and as many traditional societies. The Trobrian tribe practices magic spells and passes them down through generations, often directing their spells to induce erotic feelings in their lover or to make a person beautiful. The beauty spells are chanted into coconut oil and then rubbed onto a person's skin. Also, the tribe is known for becoming sexually active at a young age. Girls often start having sex by the age of 6 to 8, while boys start at 10 to 12, with no social stigma. There are few customs about dating to inhibit hooking up and, of course, revealing clothing has been taken to its limit, with girls going topless. Another interesting tidbit, while premarital sex is fine, premarital meal sharing is not. You're not supposed to go out for dinner together until after you get married. Number 7, Sot Do, the city where you may witness rituals of voodoo and love, Haiti. Sot Do is a municipality in Haiti, and its waterfalls are an annual site of religious importance. Every summer in July, voodoo practitioners and religious enthusiasts make a pilgrimage to the holy site to take part in a Eucharistic rite, worshipping the goddess of love. The penultimate devotional activity involves everyone bathing naked under the waterfalls, asking for heavenly favors. Then, some extreme participants take part in a sexual dance, still naked, writhing around in a mixture of mud and the blood of sacrificed animals. If you travel to Haiti and visit the waterfalls of Sot Do during July, you may witness quite a risque ritual. Number 6, The Nepalese, a community where brothers share a wife, the Himalayas. In the populated Himalayas, there is not much land available for farming and grazing, so families with more than one son would have to divide their land when each son starts his own family, providing even less agriculture per family. The solution to this is to find a single wife for all of the sons of a family so that they can keep the plot and land intact. In some Nepalese communities, many brothers might share a single wife. Anthropologists call this form of polyandrous societal practice fraternal polyandry where a group of brothers shares one wife. 
Also, as told in the National Geographic documentary Multiple Husbands, this arrangement works best when the wife is adept at scheduling time with each brother to keep jealous flares from rising. Number 5, the Wodabi, the tribe where men steal each other's wives, Niger. In the Wodabe tribe of Niger in West Africa, men are known to steal each other's wives. The Wodabe's first marriage is arranged by their parents in infancy and must be between cousins of the same lineage. However, at the yearly Jirwul festival, Wodabe men wear elaborate makeup and costumes and dance to impress the women and hopefully, steal a new wife. If the new couple can steal away undetected, especially from a current husband who may not want to part with his wife, then they become socially recognized. These subsequent marriages are called love marriages. Number 4, Ancient Egyptian Pharaohs, the pharaohs who would practice public masturbation. Ancient Egypt was a very sexualized culture, with very few social stigmas for most free men and women. The ebb and flow of the Nile was even thought to be caused by their god of creation's ejaculation. This idea caused the pharaohs, with their god-given potency, to ritually masturbate into the Nile to ensure a wealth of water for crops. During the Egyptian festival of the god Min, who represented the pharaoh's sexual power, men regularly masturbated in public. According to sex and society, even the ebb and flow of the Nile was thought to be caused by Adams, the god of creation, ejaculation. The ancient Egyptians were so inspired by the act of self-stimulation that at the festival of the god Min, who represented pharaoh's sexual potency, men masturbated in public. Number 3, The Pond Celebration, Indonesia. In Indonesia, there is a celebration called Pond. The event is held seven times a year, during which participants travel to a sacred mountain on the island of Java to perform a ceremony of good luck and fortune through sex. Participants have to spend the night and have intercourse with someone other than their wife or husband. It is said that their wishes of good luck will only come true if they have sex with the same person at all seven celebrations throughout the year. Number 2, Ancient Greece, when pederasty was the social convention. The ancient Greeks did not conceive of sexual orientation as a social identifier the way Western societies have done for the past century. Ancient Greece was one of the most sexually prolific and accepting societies in history. Homosexuality was a regular social convention, publicly embraced, but ancient Greece's tolerance alone isn't what makes their sexual culture bizarre. Sexual desire was not distinguished by the gender of two people, but rather by the active-slash-passive role that each participant played. The active person was the penetrator, mirroring their role in society with high status, adulthood, and masculinity. The passive person was the penetrated, mirroring their submissive role as someone with lower standing, and a more youthful countenance associated with femininity. The most common form of same-sex relationships in Greece was between an older male and an adolescent boy. Pederasty was socially accepted without stigmas because the older man was supposed to act as a role model, teaching, protecting, and loving, to the boy. This practice was called, pederastic, or, simply, boy love. Until the boy was able to grow a full beard, he was not considered a man. In Athens, the older man was called erasts, and he was to educate, protect, love, and provide a role model for his eraminos, whose reward for him lay in his beauty, youth, and promise. To love a boy below the age of 12 was considered inappropriate, but no evidence exists of any legal penalties attached to this sort of practice. Number 1, Modern Iranian Culture, where you can have a temporary marriage if you pay for it. We all know that Muslim practices are among some of the strictest regarding sexual intercourse and the relationships between men and women. For instance, Muslim couples are only allowed to have sex in the missionary position. It's considered gross and degrading for a man to ask for any other position from his wife. However, in certain Muslim countries, like Iran, a young couple who would like to have sex before they're ready to marry can request a temporary marriage. They are allowed to pay for a short ceremony, with a written contract dictating the amount of time they will be married. Once this is done, they can have sex like bunnies without contradicting Islamic law. In conclusion, the examination of shocking sexual practices in African tradition and cultural belief systems offers us a glimpse into the intricate tapestry of human sexuality. While these practices may seem unfamiliar or even shocking from an outsider's perspective, it is important to approach them with cultural sensitivity and an open mind. By embracing diversity and seeking to understand different cultural perspectives, we can foster a more inclusive and accepting society. Let us celebrate the richness of human sexuality and work towards a future where all cultural beliefs and practices are respected and valued.
Meanwhile don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss any update.